Ladies and gents, this Photoka Lounge video is brought to you by a scorching hot day, which you cannot see because the wall's that way. It's 34 degrees outside. Inside, it's a right around 28, 29, and again, my blood is not even ready for Canadian weather. Speaking of scorcher, I am bringing you a little bit of a review on this hot player. This is the MZE44, which is a robust version, I think, of the MZE55. They come from similar vintages. They have similar internals, I assume, both 40-second anti-shock memory. They use the same remote controls, essentially have the same function set, including AVLS switch and Megabase, and they test roughly the same. That means that you're gonna get above 90 decibels of dynamic range and noise, or minus 90, whatever it is, and you're gonna get similar THD and IMD ratings, and they're gonna perform similarly well under load. The difference is that while both of them hiss more than I like, the MZE44 hisses slightly with an accent, and that accent is there's a whine in the background. It's not a whine that's as bad as like an iPod uh, 2005 video. Um, the hiss is a little bit more than that, but there's a whine right in the background. So if you're listening to sensitive earphones like the um, Campfire Comet, Campfire Audio Comet, a beautiful stainless steel earphone, that's sensitive as hell, you're going to notice whine in the background, especially at low volumes, and especially if you're listening to acoustic music that has a lot of dynamic silences. If you have, let's say, uh, trance music, or uh, live music, rock and roll especially, you're probably not gonna notice as much, but definitely if you have sensitive or good earphones, you're gonna have a problem with this. Even if you have sensitive portable headphones, you're gonna find that this player hisses a little bit more than you may like, but it is a wonderful player extremely robust, has a good control system, and if you don't like using remote controls, I think you'll find that the button layout for this thing is about as good as it gets. It's probably a good idea to first show the size difference in these players. You can see that the chin, I suppose, would be the word that we'd use in the, in the 2000s after the iMac and the iPhone. The chin on this bad boy is a lot larger than the MZ-E55. In fact, you could probably stick the MZ-E55 inside of the MZ-E44. Maybe that's what Sony did. I mean, it tests so similarly that I assume that that's what they did. They put a robust body on the MZ-E55. But part of what makes this player, the MZ-E44, so nice to use is that its buttons are extruded out, or maybe not extruded, but they're moved out, and they're the size of your fingers. Plus volume, or minus volume, plus volume, track back, track forward and play, and stop. Not only are they mostly discrete, they're large enough that you can even put them in a bag and, and easily fiddle all the controls. Of course, like I showed earlier, or afterward, you can see that the MZ-E55 has a lot more difficult controls because they're shared rockers and they're smaller. So if you have adult size hands, you may have a hard time with this player. Even the hold button, easy to use, and it tracks perfectly with a thumb because it takes up about half the space of a thumb uh, head here. You don't need to use your fingernail. Now, the MZ-E55 is also not so hard to use, but you do have to grip the player a little bit more carefully. MZ-E44 is just about as easy a player as I've ever used for both blind operation as well as from a purse or a pocket. Now check out this. This is not a traditional battery door. It's thick, it's rubberized, or it's got soft touch on it. And while it's not exactly the best built inside, and you can see that it rocks like this, it latches firmly. You can't pull it open with your fingernail or your finger like you would otherwise, but it does slide like this. The MZ-E55, in comparison, shifts a little bit, and while it doesn't open easily, it feels a lot less robust and it's much thinner. It doesn't latch as firmly either, and while you can't necessarily pull it out, it just isn't quite as firm. You can definitely tell that the MZ-E44 was designed with robust action in mind, and check this bad boy out. You can squeeze the top, there's a little bit of movement, but this cross pattern here essentially stabilizes it, 
so that in the in event of an impact or you put something heavy on the top, it's going to stay better in shape. The eject me mechanism is the vintage Sony, which is not one touch. So you pull here and then you pop it like that. It works. It's not quite as fast as the new ones, but it's solid. And around here, this is all a soft touch um, coated plastic um, bumper that will keep this player hopefully in better shape. I think it has. I've seen a lot of units that have been heavily used and none of them have dented metal on this side, um, at least untoward dented metal. It uses the um, typical connections for battery, external battery, but because of the raised bumper, you needed a special version of it. Another thing that's interesting about this is, well, let's open up, take out the disc. Not only does it open up super wide, of course, a lot of older players opened up super wide. You can see it opens up just about the same as the MZ-E55, but there's a channel here along the side where the top of the clamshell digs right into the channel. And the channel is generally raised about a millimeter, at minimum about a half a millimeter here, so that I assume if you splashed water on this thing, water would not immediately go inside. So this is not exactly weather sealed, but it is somewhat environmentally sealed for, let's say, sweat, or I don't know, let's say you have this thing next to the kitchen where you're doing dishes, which I do, it's not going to immediately get damped or splashed or anything like that and die. So I think that's a generally good um, design and one that should probably keep it working a lot longer at least in theory, than other players. The screws come in countersunk wells. They're pretty damn solid. Um, you know, the eject button is, is nice. All the controls are really good on it. The remote is the classic Sony remote, which basically has just play controls. Here, let's put in the disc. Classic play controls here, battery reminder, displays for remaining time, etc. And the hold switch. So you can change the play mode. That's um, at the moment that's for album repeat, single song repeat, and uh, repeat and shuffle. And let's see, display. Ah, well, we've got to get it going. Playing play here, play forward, and track reverse. You can also um, scrabble forward, scrabble back. It takes a little bit longer. Once you get it playing, it'll go from title to disc name, and it looks like just how much time has elapsed. So it doesn't have a lot of functions on that front. And here's the volume. But because there's not a lot of functions on this, not even sound control, it's extremely easy to get to use and to get to know. Volume here, track forward here, track back there, pause there, hold. Those are all the controls you're gonna use in general. And it's got a little clip here. It's a very good, very basic, and long-lived remote that works actually on a whole bunch of different players from Sony. And in general is about as, well, about as good as I've ever used from them. Um, now, of course, if you need to use a three line like the NH3D or you prefer to have something with um, sound controls on it, well, this one won't do that for you and the newer remotes will not necessarily work with this player so well. But in general, this thing has everything you need on it and of course, the things it doesn't do, the player um, does for you, bass and volume. With free provisos, the MZ-E44 is one of my favorite players. I wish that it hissed or wind as little as the MZ-E55, again, which is probably, all things considered, my favorite of all portables. The provisos are that it hisses too much for sensitive earphones, and I wish that it had an LR6 battery rather than a gum stick. But those things in mind, this, which is essentially a slightly worked down version of the MZ-E55, is about as good as it gets. It's robust, easy to use, sounds good, has that crazy vintage Sony where they've inserted like five decibels of extra bass into everything. So you don't need your bass boost. And if you turn it on, it's gonna be like, Bruh. well, you don't need that. 
because, you know, base boost is already built in or baked into this bad boy, it's a very easy to use unit and it comes with my full recommendations except for with sensitive earphones. If you're looking for a good MD player in 2018, by all means check out the MZE44 if you can find one that's working and that's in good shape. Of course, you don't need a case for this and people didn't often treat it as well as they treated their other players because it was more robust. Just like putting a helmet on when you're bicycling, you'll probably take more risks, or so they say, and people around you might take more risks in their cars. Well, that said, this is a brilliant player. I've come with my full recommendation aside from the hiss, and I hope that you'll stick around and wait for some more MD stuff, more camera stuff, etc. It's been Full Taco Lounge. Leave a comment. Subscribe. Unsubscribe? No. Comment up, comment down, like, whatever it is. I'll see you next time. Thank you very much for watching.